Hello, it's part 17 of OpenDog, the open source quadrupedal robot. And because it's part 17, that means I've only worked on it for 17 weeks, including all the R&D and design, and also checking out some devices that haven't even been put into it. So includes all of that effort as well. And all of this is open source. You can download the CAD and code from the link in the description below. So last time we upgraded the microcontroller to a Teensy. We got three, rid of three Arduino Megas. And we also, before that, did some hardware upgrades with metal pulleys, some other metal pieces that I turned on the lathe, and also the rod ends, which we got from IGUS. So um, now we've got a pretty good machine, hopefully, that I'm pretty happy with the mechanics. I'm pretty happy that all the code's running in one place. But there's quite a bit more groundwork to do before we can actually get it to walk and do anything that looks amazing. Just a quick ad for my Patreon. Don't forget you can support me on Patreon and also through YouTube channel membership. And that means you can get access to a live stream with me, all my videos early, and sneak peeks and pictures about upcoming projects. Also have a merchandise store, click on the link in the description below for t-shirts with OpenDog and RobotX and various other graphics, and also bags and socks and all of that good stuff. Last time we put the Teensy in and we put all the code back on. So in parts 9 through 11, I defined the kinematic model. So check that out for lots of maths, lots of trigonometry. And that syncs up all 12 motors on the robot, three on each leg, so that they all move in unison and the robot can move in six axis using this six axis remote. And each of these joysticks has three axis. And that means we've got three axis of translation and three axis of rotation. So we can move the robot forward and backwards, left and right and up and down in straight lines. And we can also move it in three axis of rotation, which are pitch, roll and yaw. But we've still got a small issue. Right, so I've turned down the motion smoothing. So you, before you'll notice as I was moving it around, it was moving in lovely smooth motions and it still kind of does if I do it slowly. And that was because of a first order filter on the output to all the ball screws that basically decelerates them as they get to their target. So I've now turned that down considerably. It's not off completely. And now it's a lot more agile. But you can see also it shakes as it stops because it's stopping a lot more suddenly. And we can see it does some random stuff. And uh, basically this still isn't the full motor speed, we're still running on 24 volts and not 48 and we're still not at the actual maximum that I could do based on the KV of the motors and the voltage, we're about 75% of that. But I think that's probably um, fast enough for anyone for the power that we've got there and we're still limited to 20 amps per motor as well out of potentially 50 amps. So the motors are all hard coded to run at the same speed at the moment, so that's fine if I move slowly because essentially by moving my stick I'm scrolling through all of the intermediate positions. And if I move very slowly, that's fine because it's getting lots of data and it can go through all of those positions one at a time and the motors have time to catch up with each other. But if I make really fast moves, like I go up and down really quick, you'll notice that half the leg finishes before the other half. So we get this sort of effect. And that's due to the kinematic model and the trigonometry which means that basically some motors don't have so far to move. If I make diagonal moves as well, you'll notice the undercarriage still catches up afterwards. So what we really need to do is at least scale the motor speed so they all finish at the same time. That's not really the right way to do it though. What we should really do is write an interpolation engine or something else in our kinematic model, which I didn't just make the name up for, which basically steps through all of the positions from where it is to the demands position one at a time. So it say divides that path up into a hundred steps and goes through them one at a time. And then we could draw a perfectly straight line. And we can also regulate the speed it does it by stepping through them slower, basically those time steps. And that would be the same as me moving the remote control stick smoothly through all of those positions. But for now, I'm just gonna scale the motor speeds and see what happens. The other issue is of course that we're using this linear axis, this ball screw with this lever across the joint to make a rotary motion here. So we're doing linear to rotary translation. And that means of course, due to the leverage angle, depending on the position of this joint, we're actually gonna get a different rotary velocity on the actual joint. So scaling the motor speeds for the move means they'll all finish at once, but they won't necessarily draw a straight line. The other way we could solve that is a calibration curve by plotting several points along this ball screw and seeing what motor speed, or at least what joint speed, we would need, and then we could scale the motor speed on that calibration curve. But I'm not gonna do that either just yet. So now I've doubled my first order filter to double the value it was before. So now it's a lot smoother when it moves. And you'll notice, even without changing the motor speeds, there's a little bit you notice there, but in fact, because of the deceleration of both motors, uh, we can see it a bit there, but we've kind of got rid of the effect a little bit of those motors finishing at different times. Let's do a diagonal move. 
So that looks a lot cleaner. It looks like all the motors are in sync instead of those undercarriage motors moving sideways, taking longer to finish, just because all the motors decelerate at pretty much the same rate. So we're going to scale the motor speed and any other issues, we're just going to turn the filter up a bit to try and get rid of anything else that remains. So I started to write the code which will work out which leg motor moves the furthest distance, make that go the fastest and scale the other ones from there. So first thing I did was try and work out the difference in position from the last loop to the current loop. So we've got this new data set with a value called diff and that takes the current value and it takes away the one from the last loop and that's bookmarked right at the end down here. So we make a bookmark on the previous loop with the current value and use that at the start of the next loop. So that works out the difference in position change on each loop for each of those 12 motors. Then we need to know which one is biggest so we can make that one run the fastest and scale the others from there. So I did some if statements that basically takes each joint, works out if it's bigger than the other two. But before I decided to actually do the scaling for the motor speeds, I decided it, we should try and find out if we can actually write those out to the O drive on every cycle. So this is the bit of code that writes the positions and so far that's been working really well so I've just added in here a fixed value to write the uh, motor velocity limit as well to the O drive on each cycle and see what happens to see if actually it can accept the commands quick enough and change velocity on every cycle but unfortunately it looks like it can't. So now what seems to have happened is the whole thing's gone into slow motion. So it's become really unresponsive. And I think what's happened is trying to write those velocity values on every loop for the max velocity, uh, which essentially controls that motor speed, is causing the loop to slow right down, either because I'm writing too many serial commands and I can't do it every 10 milliseconds, or because uh, adjusting the motor speed takes the O drive some time to do it. So it's become really slow-mo. And also, if I move this up and down, you can kind of feel it vibrating. It's like the motors are going to the notches on the way. So it's like kind of making this weird purring sound and I can feel the whole thing shaking. So we seem to have missed some intermediate positions and the motors are going to notches and that's causing the whole thing to vibrate as well as run incredibly slow because my loop isn't running fast enough anymore. And if you remember last time when I stopped writing to the LCD every time on every loop, before I did that this was doing exactly the same thing because it took so much time to write to the I squared C bus to update that LCD, so it just looks like my loop isn't running fast enough anymore, writing velocity values on every loop. So it looks like we're going to have to sort out that interpolation engine so that we scroll through all the positions from point A to point B in 3D space. And of course change in velocity is just a change in position over time, so of course if we go through those slower with more increments, then of course the joint will move slower, so that'll actually give us total control. It's just a bit harder to write. But fortunately I found that actually there's an Arduino library for this already that somehow I've only just come across, called RAMP. So this is a library I found from SiteSwap Juggler. This is an extremely good library. It's called RAMP and basically it will interpolate, as it says here, from one point to another over a specified time without blocking the loop like a for loop would or a while loop or whatever. So there's various ways you can run this um, with different variables. It'll do characters as well, which presumably means it'll count through the alphabet or through the ASCII character set. Integers, unsigned integers, longs, floats and double precision variables, which is really good. Um, there's a bit here about how to use it, which I'll come on to in a moment. And there's various modes, including linear, which draws a straight line, and then various others, including sinusoidal, exponential, which will do various S-curves, um, and bounce and elastic, which um, do some very weird things. So let's have a look at the code. This is the example code. I've modified it slightly because I'm just doing the thing once forward, and I want a linear curve. So I'm counting from the initial value of 0 all the way up to 5,000. And basically, in the main loop, it's just printing out the value, and you'll notice that the loop is still running, so the code on the robot still runs. It's not like a while loop where it's sitting there executing that while loop until it gets to a finished value, and that means we can also interrupt it. So if we open a serial monitor, you should be able to see it amazingly counting all the way to 5,000 over 5 seconds. Which doesn't seem that amazing, but anyway, it's quite useful. If we go and open a serial plotter, we can hopefully see that it plots that value there and it should get to 5,000, there we go. So if we now go and change this to sinusoidal, and we open the plotter, we should find it draws a lovely S-curve, and the quadratic and exponential curves are a slightly different response, 
but that's extremely useful. Maybe not for position control, but it's very good for velocity for control for acceleration and deceleration. But for now, I'm gonna be using linear so we can draw a straight line in motion. And this is gonna be really useful in loads of other robotics projects, like my scar arm that moves this way, so check that out. And of course, that means I can get the end effector to draw a straight line from point A to point B, syncing both motors up perfectly without having to change their speed just by counting all the positions on the way in a linear motion. So I've now butchered the code a bit and we're doing a serial read in fact, so I'm now reading two integers from the serial terminal which are for the new value that I'm giving it and how long I want it to interpolate. I'm still using the linear version and we're using once forward. There are options for ping-ponging between them and various other things. And basically what it does here at the top is checks if that data was different to last time by bookmarking the last value, setting a flag and only kicking off the interpolation if it is, because otherwise it always gets reset. So it doesn't set that flag back until basically the value is different. And then all that we've got in the main loop is basically updating the value and writing it out to the serial terminal. So let's see what that does. Unfortunately, we can't look at the plotter because I need to type numbers in. But we start with zero, and if I want to count to 5,000 and I want it to do it over three seconds, then that's fine, and it counts all the way through all the values on the way. Now, if I want to do an interruption on this, so say that I move and then the dog reacts to a sensor and it needs to move again, it can do that before it reaches the final value. Well, instead of waiting until it gets there like a while loop would do. So if we count to 9,000, and I'm going to give myself 15 seconds to type the next value in, then that should start. And then I want to count to 100 over 3 seconds halfway through. It starts counting back down again before it gets to the final value. So that's really, really useful. So I've now programmed a button on the remote and a mode so that when I press it, it goes in and moves in Z moves. So at the moment, there's no interpolation. So we're not moving in a straight line. We're just spinning the motors at the same speed. But to make that Z move, one has to move further than the other. So one gets there sooner. So as we do it, you'll notice that one motor catches up slightly afterwards. So the robot moves in a funny line. It doesn't draw a straight line. So I've zipped that interpolation code into a function here, which is on another tab in my project. So we can use that lots and lots of times. And remember what happens is when we run the kinematic model, we're actually running it once for each leg. So all of that terrible kinematic model code that's really long runs for each leg. So what I've done is just right at the start, said that I want to take the Z axis that gets chucked into that function at the very start, which is up here, and I want to interpolate it and its output becomes the interpolated version of itself. And at the moment I specified a hard coded 800 milliseconds for every move. We will be able to of course change that on the fly so for every move we could say how long it takes and we could do that by putting another variable into our function. We'd also be able to say how much filtering we want. The moment I've set it really low, it was 100 at the very highest in this video, and we could say how filtered we want that move. So we'd be able to change the speed or the time steps going through that interpolation, the position we want it to get to, and also how filtered it is, and do that all for each leg as we do the walking gait. So now we've got that interpolation running. If I press the button, we should find it goes in a perfectly straight line. And of course that move takes 800 milliseconds either way, but that's a much more satisfying experience and we can change that time dynamically as we make each move of each leg. So that's scrolling through all the positions on the way, so it should draw perfectly straight lines. So now I just need to do the other two axes. So after some testing, I found some strange things happen with the dog if I use the same function. So I've now created three instances of that interpolation function called X, Y, and Z. On my function tab, I've got three functions using the three separate instances, which is quite important. And I've declared three instances of that ramp object. And when I didn't do that, some very strange things happened. Mainly the legs tried to move in opposite directions. And that's because basically the interpolation function got confused. That one instance got confused that it was supposed to be interpolating three different numbers. And what has in fact happened is the robot moved its legs in a weird way, not, not in sync with the kinematic model. And actually some of it's broken on three of the legs. And I tried to glue them back together, but it won't actually take its own weight now. And the piece that's broken is the piece that these uh, rods are bolted into. And they are just made of PLA mounted on the ball screw mount the thing that goes up and down on the screw, the nut, I suppose. And um, they have just got bolts screwed into PLA. So the top ones seem okay, but three of the bottom ones on that bottom leg axis have broken. 
Um, so yeah, I did try and glue them as I say, but they're just not strong enough now. So this robot is incredibly powerful. So it looked like those numbers got mixed up and the legs didn't move with their kinematic model. They just move randomly and that's caused it to physically tear itself apart. And I'm pretty sure we're going to need 12 instances of that library being initiated, one for each axis for each leg, because obviously the legs need to move independently. So it would appear just having limited instances of that library means that basically we can't do independent numbers. We can't do that interpolation on different axes at the same time. So normally you'd have a function that would be reusable lots of times, but actually it's the instance of that library being initiated that deals with the ramp in the background and you call it on each loop to get the result. So of course we need to operate those legs in X, Y and Z space so it can walk along independently, so we're going to need to do that 12 times. But first of all I'm going to have to go and fix those broken bits of plastic by upgrading them to something tougher. So I'm ending this video here and we'll come back next time with some more hardware upgrades and then we'll carry on with the motion control. Alright, that's all for now.